For more on efforts by companies to voluntarily be more green, I recently spoke to Paula DePerna, special advisor to CDP, an organization that helps track environmental disclosures by companies. The, the big question here, as the United States pulls back on its commitments to, through the Paris Accords, the Clean Power Plan, can corporations step up and fill that gap? Yes, the corporations of the world are stepping up and filling that gap. First of all, climate change, addressing climate change is not a punishment. It's a phenomenal opportunity to create jobs and uh, unleash innovation and kind of try to um, get the maximum efficiency out of energy, which is a real challenge and a very exciting challenge. So a lot of companies have understood that this is an opportunity and they have begun to step up. And many, many companies at the rate of 150 a year since the uh, agreement of the uh, Paris mm -hmm. Accord uh, have, have agreed to, to take on a science-based target. There's something like 450 companies that are now actually uh, setting their targets in relationship to that scientific goal. Are, are these science-based targets basically a form of regulation? Is it just that it's voluntary? Well, it's voluntary in some jurisdictions, like our own, but increasingly around the world, uh, it is not voluntary. So if you're a major company, um, you, you need to be smoothing out your operational costs across your geographical boundaries. So it looks like companies are tackling this on two fronts. On their own emissions is one thing, on how they do business, and then also the products of the business themselves. Give us a couple of examples. Yeah, so, I mean, you take, uh, for example, L'Oreal or, or Walmart. I mean, Walmart has a goal of reducing emissions by a staggering number of tons through, throughout its supply chain. And I think we all know as consumers that it's increasingly difficult to go and buy something mm -hmm. where you're not confronted with the greenhouse gas potential or the carbon footprint. It's a little bit like when you buy sandwiches and it's suddenly telling you the calories. You know, you kind of think twice, well, do I really need both of those sandwiches or should I just have one? There seems to be a necessary alignment here between three different stakeholders. You've got the management of a company, the investors in that company, and then ultimately the consumers of the product who all have to have some level of value for a company to start to make these changes. Yeah, well, that's well put. I mean, if you think about a slot machine, you know, you, you want to get cherries all across. So the cherries all across in climate change is, is uh, lining up science, policy, and capital. So investors are increasingly looking at, you know, is a company organized well for this scientific imperative, which means reducing emissions. Reducing emissions is an operational and financial um, uh, tool. It's, it's, it's a way of gauging, is the company well managed? Just the way we're now looking at whether a company has diversity on its board. BlackRock, one of the largest uh, investors in the world, uh, the chairman has uh, called on all of the companies in which they invest to, to be addressing and, and come into coherence with the Paris Agreement. Uh, voluntary environmental disclosure, which CDP pioneered, is now increasingly going to become mandatory uh, around the world uh, through what is called the Task Force on Climate-Related Disclosure, which means that you have to tell your investors how you're managing climate change uh, or suffer their anger, and they may divest, they may uh, sell their stock, and, you know, just an interesting factoid, about two years ago, one in $12 invested in the United States was screened for environmental or social impact uh, or good governance. Today, that number is one in five. And it means that investors are really looking to um, manage climate change. So on some level, the, the economy is getting a lot greener than we think. It's just we have to do a tremendous amount more. We're talking about millions of tons that have to be either stopped from it rising or removed from the atmosphere one way or another. In these voluntary disclosures, how do you trust but verify and make sure that this isn't uh, you know, essentially a, a marketing ploy to try and greenwash and, and improve their image, that they're actually doing what they say they're going to do? There's a lot of skill within the companies to, to look at this and manage, manage it. There's a big industry, again, opportunity jobs of consultants who help the companies. But on the thing about greenwashing, I think we might overstate the degree of greenwashing in mm -hmm. the sense of outright lie. But, but I think that there probably are a number of people who don't really fully get the, the magnitude of the, of the challenge in terms of the tonnage. Uh, but uh, by the same token, if everyone's doing a little bit, they're gradually unleashing that, um, unlocking that potential to reveal new opportunities for efficiency, new products. You know, it's very exciting. A, a little thing like a frost-free membrane. Now, it doesn't sound glamorous. But a frost-free membrane in a refrigerator or a freezer really reduces the energy demand of that product. Somebody's out there inventing that, and somebody's out there trying to invent a better one. 
and you can go through almost every little unglamorous widget um, and uh, it's a combination of engineering, imagination. It's all very exciting. We have to re retrofit, refit, redo, redesign just about everything in the world. All right, Paula De Parma, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much.